Hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Uh, this morning I'm painting in acrylics and um, that's a self-portrait that I'm hoping to put down onto a pre-prepared board, just an MDF board. Um, I put the drawing down just to get the basic shape and um, that's my materials, uh, very basic materials, basic brushes and um, so I'm really looking forward to painting this self-portrait of me when I went painting in Wales a couple of years ago. Well, it's a very hot day outside um, in my studio and I'm looking at painting an acrylic of um, it's a self-portrait. I um, visited Wales a while back and... Um, decided that this may be a good subject to work on using acrylic. So what I've done, quickly put the um, drawing down onto a sealed board um, ready for painting. Uh, squeezed out all the tubes. I've got a white, a yellow, a red. I've got cadmium yellow, cadmium red. Uh, I've got I'll burnt sienna and at the moment I've got the ultramarine but they may change as we go so the first thing I need to do is take a large brush and just block it in really um, just slightly damped the brush and I'm just going to take a little bit of paint from the top of that pot before I close it up so I've got the blue Let's just lift the rather dirty board up. I've got the, the, the blue, ultramarine, I'm going to use white and I'm going to just dab a touch of the cadmium red with that, mainly white because first thing I want to do is to block in a sense of the distant stone. Let's add a bit of burnt sienna to that. There we go. Plenty of white gone in. I need a bit of warm colour so that's the reason I've used the two, well not two reds, but um, a red and a white. Right, so let's just, so really all I'm doing is just blocking in. A bit more red now, just give it a bit of warmth um, in that top there. The light will be coming from the back. That's why I've added a little bit more red to that background there. Um, and it's not going to be a slow process. I want to get this in fairly quickly. Uh, albeit it's warm in here, but uh, that's not the main reason. I'm going to add a bit of yellow too. Try and pick up some yellowing warmth from the red in that top right hand corner. And we can get a real friend of light coming in. Notice I'm working quickly, which um, is something that um, I think even with acrylic is always a good thing to do um, because if you don't, A, it dry, it's drying quickly um, and B, you know, it's a bit more spontaneous and that's what I rely on to produce my work. Spontaneous spontaneous bashes of colour, um, blocks of colour that will eventually show up this lovely stonework because it was set in the Eland Valley and one or two people may be aware of the Eland Valley and it was a lovely dry uh, bed, a river bed and I can imagine that at some point it would get extremely uh, just bring that down there extremely wet in the winter so consequently um, this time of year it was, it was more summer months well it was it was June and um, the lovely um, 
lovely time of year there uh, to enjoy the uh, the valley in its uh, summer glory good now a couple of other little bits and bobs a bit of a bit more brown a bit more red a bit more blue a bit more white so we're just playing with these uh, colors uh, that goes down there so let's just just use that there bit yellow there we are there we go look at that just to give it that oh lovely bit of red going in just tap a bit of what yellowy white in that top right hand corner that's a good description yellowy white good so that's it now we move along to depict um, a bit more of this lighter um, color coming down here and this is a little more gray it's purely because I've put the yellow in there yellow with blue and red will give you that lovely gray and it is a nice gray actually um, more white in there more yellow make it a bit warmer grey there a bit of yellow in there um, picking around the edge of that oh I've got that lo my old lovely rucksack laid on the floor there or on the floor of the river dry riverbed lovely big rocks um, which um, always uh, gives that uh, lovely feeling of um, of lights and darks if you can get the sun right um, I'm sitting on the rocks actually working as you can see um, and I'm bringing that across to there like that and that sinks down it's quite a smooth rock that um, and I'm putting a bit more yellow in that then just to bring that nicely down there like that uh, I just ran over it with pencil with it in pencil with this one I want to establish my lights and my dark areas and that will be the key I'm adding a bit more water now because it is drying very very quickly in this warm environment that I'm in uh, here um, in my studio today um, probably the hottest day of the year so far um, well probably it definitely is actually and uh, that calls for quite a lot of speed well working abroad really I suppose in the uh, in the sunlight a bit more water it's a good thing about um, acrylic it's water based so um, we're not getting the the smell of turps I know you don't get that these days as much but there you go right now I'm going to clean that brush and leave that in the water and I'm going to use a smaller brush now to paint the shadow now I'm using the blue the brown and the red for this shadow color now to start with it's going to be quite warm so plenty of blue in there sorry plenty of red in there and brown and if you notice I'm painting the way the rocks stand if you can get that idea in other words the rocks stand upright there and they sway through there like that that's good now I'm going straight in with some red there and that comes across there like that so the key to it is is to get my lovely old hat in and pull that down to there like that right now I'm adding more blue more red considerably more blue and more red to get it nice and dark it will obviously you know there are plenty of tweaking to do but we do need to 
just study this before we um, go too far. My nose there, and of course, chin, and that tucks back into the neck. There, like that. And then that goes down the back, a bit more purpley now. I'm using the white of the board to show the whiter areas, but of course that will be painted over shortly. A bit more water in there, a bit more red. It's always a good thing to do, I'm painting down, just give them an idea where the brushes will be, but, um, and of course, around by the neck and down there. Then the arm comes up like that. Brush there. Still trying to be aware that we're painting down. And of course, it gets a little bit bluer there. And also there, and perhaps there. And some touches of blue there. So it's always a good thing to do to allow the warm and cool colours to shine through. And of course, there will be, within this shadow area, some greens. So a bit of yellow into that gives us that sort of subtle greeny blue shadow, which um, seems to be working okay. There is another shadow there, and that holds a rather jagged line with a band of light there and then of course that goes down into a jagged area there which will all be highlighted when we get to the appropriate time there's another area there just roll the brush over the paper uh, the board another dark area there that's quite dark so I'm going to pull that in with a touch of blue it gets a bit lighter at that point there that's fine and, and then of course we do go blue as we go up there is sh shadow there dappled on the stonework um, running across a bit of area there that's a bit of area of stone and one or two areas that are a bit so we've got some lines in the stone that runs across like that. It all gives texture and makes cavities here and there that quite often they will need sharpening, obviously. Uh, that is the key. The sharpening up of these areas will uh, be the key to the whole picture. Uh, and then We've got some areas here, a bit more water, a bit more paint, could do with a bit more white on the brush really, but let's just go with the flow at this stage, that comes down there, comes across there like that, that comes around there, down into there, and then we go blue again, lovely and blue, dark blue, Got my hand there. Um, that then comes up across the top of the board, down into that area there, and this is where that meets my rucksack. I've always got that lovely rucksack with me because it, uh, it's always useful for storage. And then we just gently blend that through, picking up those colours extremely delicately. That's good. Pretty much happy with that. And then maybe just another darker area around there, and another darker area around there. Other than that, you've got hard and soft areas. You've got another dark area here which could be darkened with a touch more blue. It's like a sliver edge there that we'll um, pick up there. 
so that's good and then we come back down there another little area there and then we add a bit more brown to the mix to create a lighter shadow area there perfect touch of blue in there there we go then we got all sorts of bits and bobs laying around here nice bit of shadow work there lovely bit of shadow work under the leg area just a little bit more water to pick up to pick up the shape of the legs in due course more blue so it's warm and cool colors as always that make the picture what it is and that then comes over there like that and then we have a lovely sharp warm rich uh, like a sharper edge there and it comes down into a bit more of a feathered edge that will all be taking shape very shortly well all been well <laughs> that's good and that really apart from that dark area there it's a large area of dark so I'm banging that in with plenty of red picking up around the back of the t-shirt that I'm wearing and down into the back and then across the top and sweeps down like that and that is the first blocking in of the colour for this the start of this particular subject well a thermometer is showing 34 degrees at the moment so that's how hot it is here in my studio <coughs> But that's, that's the summer for you. Good. Next thing we do to block in is blue again. So let's pick up a, what blue have we got? Oh, we've got Phylo blue here. So let's, let's pop some of that in. And we need some more white, which I understand is this one. So we squeeze some more white out. So we can get all of that white out as best as we can. Really plenty of white required in most watercolour, sorry, acrylic um, paintings. White, probably the most used um, colour in your palette. Right, now, phyllo blue with white. That it will be my t-shirt colour with a touch of red in there there we go and this is the color that I think would suit just put a touch of the ultramarine as well let's see what we get with this and we've got the neck there so a bit more white so we've got enough white on the brush and we go around the neck down the left hand side I'm going to use a support call a mill stick um, to catch the collar like that and we come down the back like that and we come underneath come round the sleeve like that we come down the front there like that and it's just a little bit of arm that we can see there other than that there's the arm there a little bit of ruffling there of the t-shirt 
so that it comes round the corner and that I think starts that arm drawing quite well so when you paint in acrylics like this um, all you need to block in really that's the first thing you need to do um, once it dries then you can start putting medium the the you know we're getting lights and darks in really um, then we'll get the medium tones in shortly um, now the hat is a bit browner so just a bit more burnt sienna for the um, for the hat uh, it is white there but we'll pick that up as as we paint or say white it's very very light but at the moment I'm just blocking in um, and we've got the rim there like that that shoots up and tucks back yep that's pretty good and my shorts were a little more on the grey side than that so that would suggest that we had a little more blue in there see a little bit more blue a bit more phthalo blue a bit more brown burnt sienna just to create that sort of colour that we're looking for for a brownie green I suppose a touch of yellow would give us a brownie green possibly that we're looking for oh yeah there you go there we go that's the colour perfect um, surprising what experimenting with colours um, actually does got to pick up the roundness of the way I've sat which is something that not always uh, possible to do but I think I've got that pretty much correct because you've got to remember this is purely the blocking in of those jeans or shorts um, now clean the brush again the flesh color well that's got to be yellow it's also got to be plenty of white in there and I'm using the red as well so it's quite a, a fleshy tone that I think it was quite a warm day um, well day we spent about a week there and it's quite warm so um, um, I did get quite a bit of color onto my uh, arms and legs and what have you so that's more or less the sort of tone we're looking for touch more red in there um, because now I'm going to do the under the hat uh, the hair will go in later just give a rough idea where and of course the nose back out and the neck chin fairly da well down and it tucks back um, all be highlighted later on of course that comes right down to there there we go that's looking good then of course we have the leg there a bit more yellow and pick up that red again helps to give a sparkle I think and the leg comes to the knee down back round like that a bit more water a bit more paint a touch more red in there a touch more brown and then we come down the knee area spread that through and so acrylics can be very enjoyable um, they can be a little more forgiving than working with pure watercolour but I always say like every other painting that you do you really need you know so it's saying you can correct but of course you've got to know how to correct and unless you know how to correct then to me 
you know, you've got to learn that before in the painting process. So it's always um, important that you try and learn the the process of of of, of painting. You know, no matter what medium you're using, it can be any really. I'm um, going to add a bit more white and a bit more yellow now, because this is for the back of the white board. It is in shadow, but I want to show reflected light coming from the back edge of that. So that's pretty good. Right, clean the brush again. It is drying quickly, but it's not getting uncontrollable. Um, Prussian blue again, or wit or phalo blue, for the socks. And these gotta be show quite a bit of Prussian initially. So that's the socks gone in. Then we add a little more white to that. Just clean that brush again. Considerably more white to that to get the sort of grey top of the shoe or boot it comes round this is also grey there just roughly trying to pick up the coloration really and then it's more brown again a bit more blue a bit more red a bit of a theme going on here with this as you can see uh, around the top there and down that goes in there like that then all of a sudden we get extremely dark again so it's plenty of red plenty of blue to give me a really deep sort of turn to that shoe area can of course be balanced later on and it will need to be balanced because I can see we need some more attention to certain areas of that but that's not a problem and then on the back edge of that on the underside there we're going to be a little bit lighter with our shadow area there like that and we do have a lighter shadow area here it's also going to be put in under there that's it and then we tuck these lighter sort of warmer tones again here a bit more of a stone colour is what I'm looking for. Oh, that'll be in shadow, all right, okay. So that then comes into there. And then we tip some white across. Always good thing to do there. And that comes down to there. There we go. And of course this then, let's pick up that round the top of the bag there we go. that's my lovely rucksack that um, I take with me on these painting trips um, I was a good companion to me um, a bit more white still a bit of colour on the brush so sometimes you use the color on the brush tinted with a bit more white to get the shape and form of everything really um, that's what I do and then I'm just pulling that in to produce a soft subtle feel that softened there and then a bit more white a bit more gray for the whiter lighter stone that will all be picked up later on 
in this lower area and the thing is with these sort of watercolors and um, sorry these acrylics um, we do tend to um, or I do try and half close the eyes a little because it always gives you a, a sense of light and shade better than there we go sense of light and shade really gives you a better feel to what you're trying to achieve so just keep painting away you know leave some of the underpainting on second and third um, applications but I think that sort of sums up the start there just one other area that we've yet to paint and that's the lovely rucksack well that is going to be yellow blue so it's phyllo blue could be winds uh, sorry uh, could be Windsor blue then I'm going to stick a red in there and that's a technical term sticking a red in there we go that's the back edge down there and it's slightly on the green side so um, slightly on the bluey green side but this time it's um, Windsor blue or Philo blue which gives a very very much a different sort of feel to that different sort of dark colour in many ways then we have a very much lighter bluey green for the sunlit part of the bag there one or two little touches there and oh and of course the top of the overhang of the bag there and just before we complete that I've just got to put in the red nice warm sort of colour for the hand that are not always the easiest things to put in I'm not wearing gloves but that will be tinted later good we'll allow that to dry well I always like to think that painting should be kept as simple as possible in other words you know not to over complicate things so um, with that in mind I'm going to try and show some some rocks in this top right hand corner I'm using a dry brush method of pulling down like that and across to show the varying strata of these of these rock formations just picking up a little bit of paint from from the palette just using that under painting as a softener in places some places a little bit darker there and these can all be sharpened up at a later date um, we've got some overhanging brickwork there and that can all be show you how to tighten all that up later on but these this is a valuable process that sometimes is overlooked it you know if you look at the scene it is it, the, 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 the actual uh, stonework it is very complicated you know lots of different elements there lots of different sections but of course you know it's as complicated as you really need to make it and uh, sometimes softening areas like this gives you an additional um, it just gives you an added sort of feel to the whole thing 
like that. I'm, I'm just getting an impression, you know. Don't try and completely copy areas, you know. Just try and get an impression of these rocks. Um, that's all the advice I can give, really. You know, uh, it's always um, a hard thing to... Oh, that's, that's nice. That is the shadow from that dark area of rock there. So keep that nice and sort of fluffy, if that's a good term to use. That's good. Yeah, yeah, quite happy with that. Um, you know, it's knowing whether you're happy, whether you're not. You know, it's feeling the... Um, the feel of these rocks and some darker edges there's a darker area there so plenty of Fuelo or Windsor and Cadmium Red uh, to go into that bit there and that is sort of like a jagged feel to that that's it plenty of different tones and structures within this rock and it all comes, seems to come down. There is a bit of brown in there, so just put it in. You know, I can see some little touches of brown in there that help to reflect the skin colour of my arms and uh, here we go. A bit of yellow. That's, that's an addition that. Uh, Helps to lighten actually. Look, see how it lightens that and gives it a green feel. Then you just bang in the blue again and it just pulls it back. And that comes down to there. Comes down to there. Good. Now we add a bit more blue, a bit more red, but can you know the red will dominate this this area here because it's the actual dark area around the hat, the rim of the hat, which will eventually be extremely important to picking up the feel of light, dark, that's a bit of dark area there, a bit of dark area there, um, and we can still allow the underpainting to come through you know we don't want to be too you know I know a lot of people say to me well you know it's it's not a watercolor it's acrylic you know you paint the color on well you do but of course you know don't cover every area with color um, under the nose just get that right and the chin there um, and around the t-shirt area and then we cut back in again and that can all be sharpened up very very shortly a bit more blue a bit more red a bit more blue in this there is hair there but that will come in later plenty of blue there the rim of that hat at the back that can be extended later on then we come down with the blue and we just rub the brush to get texture to that area there you go look at that honestly um, so therapeutic you know if you've had a little bit of a rough day um, as we all do you know um, coming into the studio and just just taking if you like um, the um, the pressure out of life on the board with the paint because um, let's face it we've all got an awful lot of pressure these days um, and we do need to show what we need some release from that and if this to 
me this is one good way of releasing that pressure um, yep I've got that coming I'm just looking to see what I've got to do there um, and a nice hard dark area there there we are I'm sure that you can gradually see where I'm coming from here um, because picking up that light well let's go dark here as, as well lots of uh, blue and red going in Fuelo and um, just there and there's just a sliver of the stonework there uh, lots of that Fuelo going in to pick up that um, oh, and here will be where there's a lot of red sticking some yellow in this time just to grey up the colour a bit more for that where I'm actually sitting and that will be quite a hard edge there a bit more blue then underneath the where I'm sitting and that then swoops across and down the back of the leg calf of the leg there that's good then plenty of phyllo and plenty of cadmium if only to use it up <laughs> tend not to waste too much paint if I can help it so um, soft area there that's right uh, shadow soft shadow there see the way I'm using the side of the brush to allow some of that um, underpainting to shine through oh and there is something that is very important a dark area there and that slips up there, runs away. It comes back into there with a sliver running like that. That's perfect. Brilliant, nice and hard edged around the back there. That's good. And what have we got here? Um, just a little bit of this. Let's add a bit of white to that, just to freshen that up. And we'll also have a bit there. Let's whiten that up. There we go. Bit of this here. Back of the bag. And across the top and up. Bit more yellow in the mix. Gives it a greeny feel again. Really just playing with these lovely colours. Um, which I think I mean at the moment you probably can't see can't quite get where I'm coming from with some of these um, brush strokes but all been well you know wind in the right direction and all of that should be able to show you how to produce rocks in their rightful shape and form. It's just what I saw down in um, in the lovely Elan Valley. Extremely beautiful place to enjoy and paint, really. Oh, there's some lovely textured work there. Just get rid of a lot of the light in this lower area. I like darks in the, in the around the edges. Lovely little 
chintz there and just pull them down like that shows that strata in the um, bit more red in the stonework and of course it's the final sharpening up of everything that really just a sliver running away there and another little sliver running away there um, this then has quite an uneven edge like that and another sliver running in there and whereas another little sliver there perhaps so just a little bit of, and, and of course that will be quite dark all will be revealed just bear with me on this one good a little bit of softening there and by softening I mean a bit less um, paint on the on the brush and that there again is a shadow area which comes across so it just pulls it it's in shadow but it's not as dark as some so that's something we've got to try and depict there like that so i'm really really just having a bit of fun with all these shapes before i finally put in um, the harder edges Right, just clean that brush, lift a bit of paint off there, that's good, clean that brush again, just touch that paint out, there we are, superb, look at that, okay, let's allow that to dry, well I'll just recap, um, before I, uh, continue um, that's the photograph of me painting in the Elam Valley um, central Wales Powys and this is the way I'm approaching it at the moment so that's pretty much me sit there in the uh, dry riverbed and um, just going to now um, pull some other little bits together. There's a little bit to do to this one. Um, and uh, I'm going to start off now with um, the hat, which is going to be a bit of blue and a bit of red, a bit of brown in there now, a bit of burnt sienna. Because I'm just going to get the moon stick out again. Uh, and I'm going to paint the flow of the hat the way it flows round and up down the highlights will come in at the end now then goes in a little bit more blue not too much blue a bit of white with that blue because that is only I'll try and pick up the film of light onto that hat which we now need just spreading through right onto the outer edge and down yeah hopefully that brown will come through yes it's peeling through quite nicely and that lays down like that and that's the hard edge which we'll highlight shortly then we have the brown so it's just blue and burnt sienna this is for the band it's actually a um, leather band through there like that 
running around the hat like that. That's it. Now we just go in with pretty much the white. Well, we do have a bit of that um, other colour, the brown on there. But that, see the way I'm picking up? The very light edges now. And there is a, another very light edge there. Let's just make certain we get enough white on the brush. We need some colour, but basically it's pretty much white. Just tinted on top and a little band there. That can be blended in shortly. Just a teeny bit down the back edge there. So that highlights that hat very well and there is just a teeny edge down the front. It's purely because we've got a backlight. A light coming from the top and onto um, the figure there. Now clean the brush again, plenty of white. This is what I say when when you know I said you will need lots of white when you paint with these sort of um, with acrylics. Um, Purely because it is um, just around the collar there. Because you've not got any white paper, you see. Well, you've got white under underside, but um, and then we come round like that, across the top of the arm and down the back. So we're picking up the highlight really. Then clean the brush again. And this time, I'm going to use the Fuelo Blue again with a little ultramarine with a touch of the red. So it's not dissimilar to the colour we had before. But let's just pick that up. So that comes up like that, round like that and down, and that is in actual fact the collar. Right, then we have the arm there coming down like that, a little white going in for that. We've got the back edge here that is pretty much in shadow. But of course, with sunlight like this, we do have some lovely touches. And I'm not worrying, as you can see, I'm not desperately picking up The colours that I see, I'm trying to balance to make a picture rather than create a, um, a replica, if you like, of the scene itself. It's it really is a an impression rather than. Go. So that's good. Now we come down like this, down the front edge. See? To the sleeve. A bit darker around there. Just to show that. Darker around the top there again. Show the arch of the sleeve there. And bit more ultramarine. Shall we try a bit more ultramarine now as we tuck a sliver of ultramarine there. Just a touch inside there. And then it comes around the arm across and down. 
Highlights still to go in. Just water that down just a touch as it comes down into that area there. And then we've then got this back edge here, which generally would appear darker on the underside there. So the arm then comes up into a lighter tone. There. And that's brilliant. And then we just clean that brush again because we do need some touches of lighter tone down that back edge. Just blend it in like that. So I'm, I'm hoping that I'm picking up the feeling of light that is always the key to many of these, these paintings. You know, the, the feeling of light, just a slight bend to the colour there, and a couple of darker tones there and there. But it really is that sort of feel. There we go. Good, let's just go up a little bit higher with that arm. Just feel like it should go up just a little touch higher. Good, let's not overdo that. Good, now we've got the brown again with the blue, ultramarine, burnt sienna, touch of red this time, touch of cadmium red, a bit of water, smaller brush, and away we go with the belt. And that sort of like tucks around the back there, like that. Brilliant. It's all looking good. It's all looking good. Then burnt sienna with white and a touch of red to create that flesh colour. And that goes in there like that. Using this mill stick to um, hold the, um, the, ha the hand steady really as much as anything. There you go, look at that. And that gives us that finite sort of flesh colour, pretty much, or at least the start of it anyway. There is highlights here um, to come on later. Um, but that arm then goes through to meet that arm there. It comes up fairly high. A bit of sort of turn there. Getting the muscles and everything. I mean, I'm not really a, um, a figurative painter. But I always think that um, anyone that paints should in many ways be able to pick up um, just having to think here because I'm coming around the eye down the nose that can always be finely shaped later on and the chin comes around up and under there um, yeah, as I say, it can always be, um, you know, I always feel that you should be capable um, in many ways of producing painting almost anything, um, reasonably. Uh, you know, you specialise and, uh, and I... Do specialise in landscapes, as you probably know. But I do like to um, try my hand at other areas of 
painting and um, put the yellow now going in same mix but just a bit of yellow and um, so consequently um, test myself um, because obviously it is so important to push the boundaries you know you can get um, sort of locked into the same old paintings and the same processes and um, which is fine but can tend if you're not careful to um, get a bit I suppose stylized really and um, I'd sooner to be quite truthful um, push the boundaries a little that's what I'm hoping to do with this one Burnt sienna going in now to pick up the shin bone and the shin of that. Try and paint the way the limbs run. I think that is probably the right thing to do. Lots of far better figurative painters than me. But um, I'm enjoying it and uh, can't ask any more than that really. Enjoy your painting and um, if you're enjoying what you're doing then that to me is, well it's not half the battle, it, it is the battle really. If you enjoy what you're painting then that to me is a winner and then that is a different shad colour so that will be the shadow to the shorts I'm wearing and then we just pull that round try and get a bit of form and shape if you know if you see creases then pull them in that all helps to show form and shape to whatever you're painting yeah um what do we got now right some quick darker areas before we allow that to dry again that's the boot and that's the boot as well there. Good. Then we just lo loosen up the colour by having less cut tone on there. And we paint around like that. Picking up the shape of the, the way the, the boot lays like that. Not that difficult really. You know, suggestion, as I've always said. Um, you suggest colours. Don't actually um, paint everything in. And then we go to this dark sort of blue colour. Because that is the sock. Like that. And there's another one there. So it's the shadow side of the sock. Actually, it looks a bit like water there, gushing away. Um, but, that's fine. That's it. Just put another bit of highlight onto that. There we go. I just, I just like that highlight there. Um, just feel that it's required for a finite reason really then some more of this brown what have I got here this dark brown it's burnt sienna Prussian phyllo blue for the back of the hair there and round the ear that's it 
And of course there again, we just soften that in. We, do, we don't want it to dominate. We want the, the light of the skin to show. Then it just comes down there like that. Bit of light under there. Inside the ear. Just need to just fiddle some detail in there. Good. Let's allow that yet again to dry. Well, that completes part one of this demonstration of a self-portrait, me painting in central Wales. And that's the photograph I'm working to. Part two will be next on the list of my videos. Please enjoy the finishing stages of this self-portrait. Thank you for watching, and if you haven't already done so, please subscribe by clicking the link logo on the bottom right-hand corner. Thank you all very much for watching.